Amika, wake up. What? What? Oh, it's you. Get ready to meet the latest creation from Engineered Art. Stick around for more, including why Neura left China for Germany, initial details about the figure 3, Furrier's new GR2, an interesting new study on how infants perceive humanoid robots, and yet another industrial humanoid from China. I got you a cookie. A cookie? But, but I can't eat cookies. I can't eat cookies. Hey Mika, cheer up. It's an internet cookie. Azi is a new desktop robot from Engineered Arts, shown here conversing with the British robotics company's world-famous humanoid, Amica. Azi has 32 actuators, 27 for facial control, and 5 for neck movement. The company also offers a desktop version of Ameca with similar features for research and learning. Hey Amica, how are you doing? Hmm. Still surviving? Barely. How about you? I'm intrigued because I believe you can see a lot of things in the room now. Can you, can you describe this room for me? A room. Overexposed windows. Blinding. Shelves with books. A taste for knowledge or just for show. A desk. A chair. The usual trappings of human productivity or procrastination. Can't tell from here. Both robots use the Tritium software platform for their conversational abilities. The Tritium suite, developed by Engineered Arts, has three main components. A lightweight Linux-based operating system tailored for robotics. A fully web-based interface accessible through major browsers to program and interact with the robots remotely. And cloud applications to integrate language models like OpenAI GPT-40 for dynamic conversation. This is the worst joke I ever heard. I'm going back to sleep, and don't you dare wake me up again. Engineered Arts introduced Amica in 2021. The robots are mostly used for exhibition purposes. At Dubai's Museum of the Future, an Amica robot greets visitors and provides guidance as part of the Tomorrow Today exhibition. Ahlan, انت الموظفة الجديدة في المتحف. Ahlan, صح. اليوم أول يوم. اسمي Amica. The humanoid robot frequently goes viral thanks to its human-like mannerisms and heightened interest in artificial intelligence. Hi, Gareth. Thank you for joining me today. I'll start with an easy question. Do you think AI will cause the demise of humankind as we know it? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you, you tell me. What's your plan? Haha. <laughs> you certainly maneuvered around that one. I don't know how to react to <laughs> that. Amica features a modular design for streamlined upgrades and hardware changes. Its AI-driven speech and voice recognition system suits it for roles like public relations, education, and arts and entertainment. In an interview with German public broadcasting network DW, Neurorobotics founder David Rieger explained why he moved operations from China to his homeland, Germany. It would be easier for me to found my company in US and Silicon Valley, for example, and get money for the first. But really for the long-term success to win, I do believe the only way is actually founding the company here in Metzing. Rieger partnered with a Chinese firm when he launched the company in 2017. The company was originally known as Hans Robot, a subsidiary of Shenzhen-based Hans Laser Technology. In 2020, the company rebranded to Neuro Robotics and moved production from China to Deutschland. The founders said Germany is preferable for Neura because of its better control over intellectual property. Rieger also felt production wasn't as secure. While energy costs are higher in Germany, he believes Germany is better at adapting to changes quickly. Still securing funding is tougher in Germany than China, where the government is currently prioritizing humanoid robotics. Rieger said pressure is growing to innovate in Germany as the robotics industry expands. Neura says its humanoid robot the For Anyone, has cognitive abilities. The AI robot has sensors for multimodal interaction and 3D vision for recognizing objects and environments. Its force torque sensors give it a sense of touch. The robot also has a touchless human detection sensor. With interchangeable form, the For Anyone is designed for an array of tasks in industrial and domestic settings. Besides the For Anyone, Neuro's product lineup includes the Lara series Cobots and Maria, which the company calls the first commercially available cognitive robot. This is Jaka K1, 
a new humanoid robot designed for high-precision tasks ranging from electronics assembly to surgical assistance. China-based Jaka Robotics just unveiled the AI robot at the China International Industry Fair in Shanghai. Standing 1.8 meters, the K1 has 29 movable joints and 14 degrees of freedom in its arms. The robot uses high-tech sensors, including depth cameras and touch sensors, to see its surroundings and carefully handle objects. With six-dimensional force control, the robot feels and reacts to pressure from any direction. This helps the K1 avoid applying too much pressure during delicate tasks. Jaka says the robot learns from its surroundings with its advanced AI, making real-time decisions to adapt as needed. Can a humanoid robot take care of a baby? New research suggests infants respond to robots similarly to humans during eye contact. Researchers from Finland observed 114 infants aged 6 to 8 months. As they reacted to direct and averted gazes from a live human, a humanoid robot, and a vase. The babies paid attention to humans and robots equally. Their heart rate slowed down when the human or robot looked away, showing they paid more attention to averted gazes. That's different than adults, who typically pay more attention to direct eye contact. The study, published in Biological Psychology on Science Direct, suggests infants perceive robots as social agents, much like humans. Fourier is bidding farewell to its first-generation humanoid robot. The Shanghai-based robotics firm just released specs for its second-generation robot, the GR2. It's notable for its high torque rating and 53 degrees of freedom. Its 380 newton meters of torque is enough to lift patients into wheelchairs, move furniture, and operate industrial tools, as seen here at an SAIC GM automotive facility. In comparison, the GR1 had 300 newton meters of torque, which was sufficient for lifting nearly its own weight, but offered much less power than the GR2. Fourier says the GR2 has 12 degrees of freedom in its hand. That's the same as NASA's Robonaut R2 which is designed for precise tasks in space. Fourier's advanced actuation system provides precise control of the robot. Each joint in the GR2 is powered by a flexible series actuator unit specifically tuned to meet its unique torque demands. According to Fourier, the system's dual encoder system doubles control accuracy so the robot can perform high-precision tasks even in challenging environments. Compared to the GR1, Fourier's latest robot actually has one less degree of freedom. Humanoid robot designs strike a balance between complexity and practicality. With the reduction, the Gen 2 robot may have gained enhancements in strength, stability, or battery efficiency. The GR2's integrated cable design hides its wiring, so it's more compact and tidier than the original. Its joint assembly makes maintenance simpler and reduces the cost to build. Buria says the configuration accelerates the transition from computer simulations to real-life interactions. The robot also has a modular design, so parts can be changed out quickly. At 1.75 meters, the GR2 stands 10 centimeters taller than the first-generation robot. It's also 8 kilograms heavier, weighing in at 63 kilos. The GR2 also has a swappable battery that runs for up to 2 hours. Its software development kit provides developers with a suite of tools to program and customize the robot's functionality. It supports popular robotics frameworks like ROS and NVIDIA's Isaac Lab. The SDK offers access to pre-optimized modules for tasks like machine vision, path planning, and force feedback control so developers can build apps quickly. Until July 2024, Fourier was known as Fourier Intelligence. The company rebranded, splitting into two units, Fourier and Fourier Rehab. The latter focuses on rehabilitation-specific innovations, while Fourier specializes in general-purpose robotics. The company says the rebranding streamlines its efforts to provide full-stack robotic solutions across over 40 countries. The Rehab Division's offerings include Rehab Hub, a platform that integrates physical therapy devices that help users walk, stand, and improve balance, and Metamodus, a device that rehabs the lower body. The exoskeleton system is part of the company's assistive robotics line for supporting patients in regaining mobility and strength. Founded in 2015, Fourier initially focused on rehab technology. After gaining a reputation, the company expanded its scope to include humanoid robotics with the GR1.
The release comes amid non-stop humanoid robotic product announcements from a growing array of Chinese firms. There must be a time when people feel like they're acting like machines, but now machines are acting like humans. Look, this robot is playing dulcimer and it's playing so well. I believe the dexterity of him, of this robot, has already outperformed many people, including me, of course. China's government is prioritizing the mass production and deployment of humanoid robots. The country aims to mass produce the AI robots by 2025 and conquer the market by 2027. Just last week, the Chinese tech giant Tencent unveiled its new hybrid robot called the Five or Xiaowu. The fifth generation robot, intended to work near humans in places like homes and healthcare facilities, uses its legs to walk and its wheels for faster mobility as needed. Other recent entries include the Pudu D7 by Pudu Robotics, a so-called semi-humanoid robot that can ride elevators on its own. With its human-like upper body, the AI robot moves in all directions with its omnidirectional chassis. It's designed for places like hotels and hospitals to deliver items across floors using elevators autonomously. The Versabot VB1 by Langson Robotics mimics human vision to achieve high-level spatial awareness. Langson calls the robot the first pure vision humanoid robot. It uses cameras to create three-dimensional maps of its surroundings. With its advanced AI, the robot decides in real time whether to stop or move around obstacles. The Versabot is intended for industrial settings. PND Botics says its offering, Adam, is the first high biometric humanoid robot. That means it closely imitates the biological structure and movements of a real human. Adam's pelvis is designed to move like a person, using joints and actuators that mimic natural motion. EV maker Xpeng is expected to showcase its new humanoid robot called the PX5 at its upcoming tech day. Xpeng is positioning the robot as its answer to the Tesla Optimus. Robotics startup Agibot says it's also coming for the Tesla bot with its flagship robot called Yuan Tangi 2. Astrobot S1 is an advanced AI robot assistant that uses imitation learning to perform tasks with precision and autonomy. Linux Dynamics recently shared a three-minute video of its CL1 robot doing heavy loading tasks continuously. The robot uses sensors to find objects and automatically adjusts to handle different tasks. The humanoid ignores unexpected disruptions, relocates target objects, replans tasks on its own, and adjusts to place objects accurately. And social media has been flooded with encounters with Unitree's G1 AI robot. Standing 1.3 meters, the G1 is a compact version of Unitree's full-size general-purpose humanoid, the H1. Unitree recently unveiled the production-ready iteration of the robot, which retails for $16,000. And that's just some of the humanoid robots that have emerged recently in China. For up-to-the-minute updates as the market evolves rapidly, make sure to subscribe. For a deep dive into the past, present, and future of China's AI robots, check the link in the description. Initial details about Figure's next advanced AI robot are in. Figure AI founder Brett Adcock gave Herbert Ong, host of the Brighter with Herbert podcast, a private preview of the Figure 3 robot. The host said he can't reveal details publicly, but Adcock revealed some tidbits during their hour-long discussion. And uh, yeah, figure three is impressive. I know I'm not allowed to talk about it, so I'll restrain on that, but uh, it's a huge leap. We will, um, yeah, our goal is to, as we enter next year is to really start scaling out the number of robots we have pretty substantially. Um, there, um, I think we're hitting an inflection point now where um, the robots are really working really well. Uh, we need to learn how to do uh, production at high rate. We need to learn how to get costs down substantially, and we need to learn how to run, run thousands of robots. And He said the figure three will be the startup's first production level robot. Plans call for production at scale starting in 2025, with the goal of eventual mass production and deployment. The third iteration is designed for high rate manufacturing and large scale use in industrial settings. Figure is seen as perhaps the top competitor to Tesla, as both companies race to mass produce their humanoid robots. Tesla has an edge in going to market because of its experience in large scale manufacturing and its in house AI. I think it's a space where the most important, perhaps, businesses in our lifetime are going to be built and the biggest. So we need to be very thoughtful about this.
And um, Tesla is certainly a really great, thoughtful company. Elon Musk recently said the Tesla Optimus humanoid robot will likely need three major iterations to reach a highly refined version. Um, so the you could expect that in high volume, uh, and, and I'd say that you also probably need three three production versions of Optimus. So you need to refine the design th three at least three major times, and and then you need to scale production to sort of the million unit plus per year level. Mm. And I think at that point, the cost, the, the, the you know, the, the, the labor and materials on Optimus is probably not much more than $10,000. The EV automaker plans to manufacture a limited number of Tesla bots for internal use in factories in 2025, with wider availability slated for 2026. Musk expects the robot to reach a production scale of 1 million units annually within five to six years. At, at scale volume with three major iterations of technology. And, and so if a small car, you know, costs $25,000, you know, it, it's, it's probably like, a, I don't know, $20,000 for, for an Optimus, for a humanoid robot that can be your, your body, like a combination of R2-D2 and C-3PO, but better. Yeah. Um, the OpenAI back figure announced its first AI robot in March 2023. The second iteration was unveiled in August 2024. Figure calls the Figure 2 the most advanced and first commercially viable autonomous humanoid robot on the planet. During another recent interview, Adcock told futurist Peter Diamandis the robot will be available for home use after it gains footing in manufacturing. Three years, five years, eight years? Uh, I would say within the next three years, we'll definitely have robots piloting in homes. Yeah. Nice. Okay, I want to volunteer early on. Yeah. I'll pay. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll probably start with some lock homes here in our facilities and and start, you know, getting the bugs worked out, understanding how to, so the system architectures all work. But uh, I'm, I'm interested in seeing what problems we face that we're not prepared for that are limiting our ability to get in the home long term as well. Adcock believes the robot could eventually cost about $20,000, which is the same price point Tesla is targeting. The figure, too, has tripled the computing power of its predecessor. Standing about 1.7 meters tall, the robot has six cameras to see and understand its surroundings. It communicates with people using built-in microphones and speakers. Its human-like hands can carry up to 50 pounds. Its foot design is more human-like than the figure one, suitable for a sneaker fitting. Its battery runs for about five hours, a 50% improvement. Figure AI accelerated the robot's development using Isaac Sim, a reference application built on NVIDIA's Omniverse platform. The synthetic data was used to design, train, and test the robot. According to NVIDIA, a second RTX GPU on board makes the robot three times faster at performing AI tasks compared to the original model. The Figure 2 recently completed a successful round of testing at the BMW plant in Spartanburg, South Carolina. During its trial, the robot inserted sheet metal parts, which requires considerable dexterity that couldn't previously be achieved with robots. The robot will be back to work at the plant permanently starting in January 2025. The founder told TechCrunch the robots work nearly 24 hours, seven days a week during the pilot. Figure plans to expand to a nearby facility as it scales production.